Good morning everybody and welcome back to Divine Lou Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed and this is our weekly live tutorial. So I can see that there are a few people joining us already this morning. I see some new names there. Beck is on board in the background, so if you've got any questions, just type your question down there and she'll send it through to me um, or chat it through to us either way. I think she's mic'd up as well. So yes. um, good morning everyone. Yeah, so she's off in the background because I need the room. <laughs> so I can see that Benita's here and Elsie's here, Wendy's here. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey Bonnie, Bonnie thanks for joining us this morning. So we have a nice quick tutorial this morning. We have a little coin purse that we're going to be making and as you would have seen from the picture, we're just um, it's just a little snap button on it. It's got a little swivel hook on it so you can hang it onto your key ring or anything like that. But I actually use mine for my hand sewing and I have some needles in there so I use the flap as a like a little needle book. I've got a little pair of scissors in here. Um, I have a crochet hook so I can weave through my tails. Um, I've got a bit of floss because this is from my Sashiko kit. Um, I've got spare needles as well. Like, it actually holds quite a bit. <laughs> it's still it coming nice. out. <laughs> and, and then I've got the spare needles there. Thank you, Bonnie. Yes, I got my hair done yesterday for my birthday. Um, I'm embracing the grey, as you can see. Um, my hairdresser is going to help me break the habit of dyeing my hair. Um, Georgia's great. She, she's um, awesome. So, yeah. So, it's cut a lot shorter. We took about uh, four inches off yesterday. So, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, basically, you can use them as little uh, kit bags as well. So, um, I'm going to make a heap more of these today to put in with my cross stitch because I completely forgot that that's what I use most of the time use them for. And my girls also said, yeah, mum, we've got them in our sewing box for when we do hand sewing and, and we're traveling. So <laughs> nothing sticks out of it. It all stays in there and you don't have all that stuff rummaging around in your project bags. But the main purpose that I made them for um, was for coins. And I also put business cards in them as well and have them in my handbag because I always get in trouble off back for not having my business cards because I swap handbags because that's what you do <laughs> when you make heaps of handbags. <laughs> You accessorise yourself. <laughs> so I can see a few more have joined us uh, the, today. We've got Valerie. Thank you for joining us today, Valerie. Thank you, Susan. Hi to you too. Um, we've got Ellen's here and Dale's also here as well. Thank you very much. And thank you for the birthday wishes too from everybody. I have been feeling the love from around the globe in the last 24 hours. I went to bed pretty early um last night and i woke up to a ton more from everybody in the northern hemisphere so it's great the 24 hours of birthday wishes it makes you feel the love that's for sure Alrighty, so there's just a few things that you're going to need today you're going to need your fabric so you're going um and all the cutting measurements are down um below i Put everything that you need down there and a few extras as well and there's links to all the different things that um, I'm using today as well so you're going to need an exterior fabric you're going to need a lining fabric now those rectangles will need to measure nine and a half inches by five and a half inches and you're also going to need a piece of uh, fusible fleece or batting and that's the same measurements as your fabric and you're going to need a little rectangle measuring two inches by two and a half inches you're going to need a rotary cutter a pair of scissors some template plastic especially if you're going to make a lot of these the template plastic comes in hand but not necessary you can just use um, printer paper to cut out your template not a problem uh, you're going to need a uh, tailor's awl which I have here so this is my purple one we had the green one on the show the other night and today we've got the purple one you're going to need something to turn help turn your uh, project out and if you're using template plastic you're going to need a sharpie to um, draw the line so you can cut it out you're going to need an iron and an ironing pad you're also going to need a little lobster click clip but that is uh, added extra so you don't necessarily have to put that on if you don't want to you can just have it without it you're going to need a cam snap setting tool and of course you're going to need some cam snaps. 
um, or plastic snaps. They've got, they go under all sorts of different names. There are links down below where you can get all this stuff if you don't have it. So there's a, um, a link to the kit list for the accordion bag and it has all the uh, clips and everything that I use here in the store for different things. All right, so once you've got all your supplies together, <clears throat> you're going to, basically you're going to measure out your template plastic or your piece of paper. As I said, it is uh, nine and a half inches high and it's five and a half inches wide. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of marks on it and then we'll cut those corners off so it makes it super easy for the template. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera down. So if you get motion sickness, now is the time to look away because I don't want to make you sick. <laughs> and we can get started with our little um, pouch. And I'll just move my coffee before that goes for a six. I might move it around to you, Beck, if that's all right yes. with you. There we go. Yeah, with mine. The beauties of live. You've got everything everywhere. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just going to tilt the camera down and then we'll get started. Alright, hopefully I didn't make everybody too sick there. Alright, it looks like it's a pretty good view from where I'm sitting. Alright, so as I said, we're going to um, cut a piece of template plastic or a piece of printer paper either way. And you're just going to make it nine and a half inches high and five and a half inches wide. And you can see there, I've just got that written on there. Um, I also put on my template plastic what I have to cut of each one. So you're going to cut an exterior fabric, a lining fabric and a fusible fleece using the template. And I also put down the little tab down there and that just jogs my memory because there's no real pattern for this. This is just something that I whip up. It's sort of similar um, like a smaller um, iPad cover that I make, similar process to it as well. Then what you're going to do, you can see here, this is the one that I use all the time, and you can see that I've cut the corners off to make it nice and easy. So once you've got your piece of paper sorted, what you're going to do on one edge at the top, you're going to measure in from this point in one and a half inches and down one and a half inches. And you're gonna repeat that on the other side so once you've done that, you can see there, I've just come in and then you just grab your scissors and you just cut on that dotted line from point to point. And then you've got a perfect template to use. All right, so once you've done your template, you're going to cut out your fabrics, which I've done that off camera just to save us a little bit of time. Plus I always have a ton of these ready to go as well as gifts and stuff like that. Um, if you've got any sort of logo or anything like that, um, I generally just make a little mark down from this corner and my, my little logo is only half an inch, so I just measure down half an inch, draw lines from side to side and then place that in and stitch that in on the lining. So you want to do that before you start assembling the bag. Then what you're going to do is we're going to grab our tab piece. And then we're just going to fold that in half and give that a press. It doesn't need any sort of stabilizer or anything like that. And then you're going to open that back up again and then you're going to fold your raw edges into the center where you've just made that crease. Did you pass me a clapper? It's just behind you. And then you fold the other one into the center as well. Now, if you struggle to use uh, like with little pieces or anything like that, you can use a product called um, Roxanne's Basted Glue. And then you can baste it um, and they come in all different sizes. So this one is the, the twin edge. So you've got, um, so you've got a, a pointy end. And then you've got, <laughs> Peck's just handing me all sorts of stuff in the background there. And you've got a wider end. And I sometimes use this for bindings for when I'm traveling so I don't have to worry about all the clips. Then you've got a little uh, dip and dab. You've also got the original one, which was in the squeeze bottle. And that comes with that one. That's really good for getting into tight places. But my favorite one at the moment is this little one. It's got a great little nozzle on it. So you can see it there. And I just, I always have trouble using little pieces so I just put a couple of little dots of the basic glue along and then I fold it on itself 
with the pretty sides facing out and then I just hit that with the iron and then that will be ready that will stay together and that will be ready to um, put through the sewing machine and then all you're going to do is you're going to stitch an eighth of an inch along that edge there to close it and I don't worry about going on the other side but you can do it down both sides but it's only such a small piece I don't really worry about that alrighty so you set that aside and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your exterior fabric that you've cut out and then you're going to lay your fusible fleece down onto the wrong side of the fabric and one side of the uh, fusible fleece is a little bit bumpy so um, basically all you need to do is make sure that that bumpy side is down onto the wrong side of the fabric and then you'll be ready to press that into place. This is beautiful fabric. I love this fabric. It's my favourite fabric at the moment. Is it? Yeah. Oh, and yes. I'm not usually a pink girl. No, it, but it is. It's very It's very pink. nice, yeah. yeah. And sometimes I use my clapper. You might be wondering why I'm doing this. There's no creases or anything like that. Sometimes I like to just um, hit it with the clapper, uh, especially with fusible fleece, and it just gives it a nice smooth finish, and I don't add too much heat to it so um, it won't melt or anything like that because it is a polyester that I'm using. So once that's on you're ready to start sewing. As I said this is a really really quick project. So what we're going to do is then we're going to get our lining um, fabric. Now this has got my logo on it so I know that this is the right side of the fabric and I'm just going to lay them pretty sides touching and then I'm going to grab my pins and I'm going to pin that all into place. Making sure that all your raw edges are lining up. And then on one side, I just grab my friction pen or a chalk pen or whatever that you use to mark. And I'm just going to leave a gap. My friction pen is running out. <laughs> so you can see there, I've just made that mark and I know not to sew there. You can just put pins there as well. All right, so we're just about ready to start sewing. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to get rid of this iron before I burn myself. <laughs> and move the sewing machine over. Pull the gear out of the way and bring the sewing machine over oh, so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll just tilt that a little bit there. All right, so the first piece that we're going to sew is our little tab. And I just use, I, um, as I said, I just use an eighth of an inch seam allowance down the one side. And I have a piece of, there it is. Kicked me thing out. All right. Okay, so just down one side, we just want to close that up so it um, stays together. The glue will keep it into place as well, which makes it a lot easier. And we're just going to top stitch that closed. Alrighty. So you can see there that that is just now top stitch closed. I'm using a white thread today so you can see it a little bit better. And then what we're going to do is grab our little lobster clasp and we're just going to feed that through. Bring the raw ends up together and then we're just going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance and close that. I need a new leader cloth. <laughs> This one's a bit hairy. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit hairy. All right, try that again. All 
All right, so that's just going to keep that closed. Do you know where my um, scissors are? I think they're all in with my cross stitch at the moment. I seem to be uh, missing all my scissors. Thread snip? Yeah. Would you like to borrow these? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was missing something, Missy. So get rid of all your threads and then you'll be ready to um, just insert that in when we're ready to close up the um, pouch and create the pouch. So set that aside. And now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your other piece and where you've made your marks, you're going to start there and you're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and you're going to go all the way around, remembering to reverse at the beginning and at the end. <clears throat> it's a super quick make. These make awesome gifts for people too. So. I always have some on hand. I've given a few away as prizes on the channel as well. And um, as I said, I, I completely forgot that I used them for um, hand stitching. And um, now I've got, now I'm on a mission to make a whole heap today to go into all my cross stitching pouches. That way I won't stab my hand with the needles or the end of the scissors like I did last night when I reached in to grab some floss out. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> And I love this idea of using it as a little... Yeah, and like as I said, you can use the flap um, of the, the pouch as a needle book because, yeah, it's there, it's out of the way. And you've got that fusible fleece in there as well. And I just go through the lining layer. I don't actually go all the way through the flap. Um, Wendy has a question. Yep. Do you have any problem with the needle getting sticky with the glue? No, never. I've never had that issue at all. Um, I have used other glues before where I have had that issue and it gums up the needle and everything like that. But um, with the basic glue, it's specifically designed for sewing um, and never had any problems with it. And no one I know has had problems with it either. So that's, good. Um, that's yeah, good to know. Yeah, it's, and it, it's the only one that I really use. Um, I do use the ultimate glue, but I'm generally not sewing through that. So um, I don't have that issue because I use that to uh, install bag hardware and stuff like that. But the basted glue, I use it for um, piecing. So if, if I'm doing massive amounts of four patches or pinwheels or something along those lines, I use it for that. It just saves a ton of pinning and yeah. I do it all at the um, ironing board. And then that way I can just go to the sewing machine and I can just chain piece them through and I'm not gonna have any issue of any gumming up or anything like that. Um, but in saying that, if you've got an old needle in your machine, you'll have all sorts of problems anyway. So if you're starting a new project, you should use a new needle. And especially if you've done a lot of sewing with that particular needle. So before I do any tutorials or anything on here, I always give my machine like a mini service. So I get rid of all the, the stuff out of the, you know, the gunk that gets caught up in the, around the bobbin and stuff like that. I get rid of all that. I change the needle. Um, I give it a good wipe down and make sure that, um, yeah, that everything's working okay. Give it a bit of a test run because, you know, if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to be while I'm live. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, but That's it's a good, it, it is a really good habit to get into um, before you get into any sort of sewing for the day or any new projects. Um, I forgot my pinking shoes back. They're just behind you. Could you grab them for me, please? So now that we've sewn that, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of this bulk out of the um, seam allowance. So I can see the chat's just going off just out of the corner of my eye today. It's, everybody's yes. chatting away. It's really good. I'm glad to see it. And we've got 32 on, which is amazing. Um, it's really great that everybody's joining us today. I really do in, in, enjoy seeing you all here. So it's amazing. And if you're liking what we're doing, please do um, hit that like button. And if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button button because we have a lot of great tutorials like this and um, we do finish it Fridays and all sorts of stuff so yeah alrighty so all I'm going to do now is just take some of the bulk out so you can see here we've got 
um, these corners are going to poke out so and Beck's hitting the table again sorry about the shaking there it's not sorry. an earthquake it's just Beck <laughs> it's earthquake Beck <laughs> so we're just going to take some of the bulk out of the um, corners here just to make it turn out a little bit nicer and the same up in this area here too so all I do is I just get my pinking shears to make it nice and easy and I just snip all that excess off without going into my stitches and I will show you exactly how I do that. So you can see there that I've just taken it out of the top part of it and that's what it looks like. There's still enough there to top stitch it and everything like that. It just takes some of that bulk out and just makes a nicer finish when we turn it through. And then I do the same down this end as well. And I hope everybody can hear me okay. Yep. Yep. I can hear you good. So. Cool. And the there's no lag on the feed either by the looks of it. No, it's going pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bonita would like to know what brand of pinking shears you're using. Um... <laughs> They are the cheapest ones I could find and they're actually, I don't think I've actually got any left in stock because they are quite popular. I've had these for, since 2011, I've never had them sharpened. I use them all the time for everything. Yeah. Um, everything that needs bits and pieces taken off it, I use them and they are just the Birch Creative brand. They cost me, I think they were $20. Um, and in the scheme of things for, um, pinking shears I think they're brilliant like I haven't used um Kai brand or the expensive brands because back in 2011 I was on a pretty strict budget back then um I would love to get some um Kai ones but um these ones have served me well and they're, um, still... And they're still sharp like yeah so I um yeah I haven't I haven't invested any more in I mean when these start giving me Trouble, I'll probably invest in, in a set of Kai ones. I mean, I have heard that they're really good and I do love my Kai scissors that I've um, got. So I really do like them. Um, so I'm guessing that the other ones would be a good brand as well. Alrighty, so what we've done is we've pinked all those edges. We're just about ready to turn that through. Uh, get rid of any of your um, scraggly threads that get in the way. And I'm using... Emma Louise and sometimes that likes to fray a little bit so what I'm going to do is just reach in ah Paula Parnell just said that she has a, a set of the Kai pinking shears yeah but she's not sure that they're much better than the cheap ones that she has yeah yeah so that's interesting yeah um and that's and that's a big gamble like it is a big gamble because they're like $90 I think $70 off the top of my head. I can't really remember the price, but I know that they're not cheap. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it is a big, big outlay. And as I said, I got these, these, um, you know, and I believe the rep when he said to me, he said, look, these are really good. You, you won't be disappointed. And I thought, well, you know, I think I, they were $15 at the time, um, on special. And I went, yeah, all right, I'll give them a go. Um, and I honestly can say I have never been disappointed with them. I have recommended to everybody. Everybody that's ever come to one of my classes in person has pretty much walked away with a pair yeah. <laughs> because they just see how good that they cut. They're just well made. So once you've um, turned that out, you're going to give that a really good um, poking with your turning tool and you're going to make sure that all your seams are laying nice and flat. And that will give you a really good finish. So you can see, I've moved them all. So you can see there that we're going to now top stitch. So basically you want to make sure that all your points are poked out really well. So that's including these ones in here and up the top of your little purse. But before we top stitch, we have to get all that out and then we need to give it a really good press. So bring your little ironing pad over, tuck your little bits and pieces in and because you've left it open on the side it just should fold in nicely even with the uh, fusible fleece and that opening will be top stitched close. 
Now I don't pink where my opening is. You would have noticed that, that I didn't pink and that just gives me a guarantee that I'm going to catch that to close that up. So um, just be aware of that. Like some people say, yeah, pink it all the way around. I actually don't. I leave that bit there because then that guarantees me that I am going to catch enough of the fabric when I'm doing my top stitching to close that up. <clears throat> and it's not going to come open or anything like that. That's a good little point. Yeah. You know, I've had the, the, just little things that have given me grief in the past when I've made them because I've, you know, pinked it too close or things like that. I just like to um, make sure that that's not going to happen to me again because <laughs> then you've got to unpick. <laughs> and that's and no fun. Who likes unpicking? No one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they are pretty today. They're pink glitter. <laughs> and Beck's got blue glitter, so you'll probably see them on Friday. <laughs> um, we both went down um, together yesterday and got our nails done and had a pedicure and a nice massage in the chairs that they have at the nail salon. So it was a lovely day that I had for my birthday. And then we yeah. come home and had some lunch. It was a good and, day. Um, yeah, because everybody else had to work. Clapper, please. Clapper. Yep. Everybody else had the work, so we just went and um, had a bit of fun together. <laughs> it was great. Yes, your yeah. nails do match your fabric. <laughs> oh, they do too. <laughs> Not intentional. Oh, well, you can make a blue one and yours can match yours. Because <laughs> yeah. oh, you've got the blue variation of that fabric. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, so what I did yesterday, I decided that I was going natural with everything. So I got my false nails removed. And these are just my natural nails now, and I didn't get any hair dye put in. So, yeah, au naturel I am. So, and that's just a gel polish, which lasts a little bit longer. Alrighty, so now we're ready to turn this into a little pouch. But first we need to uh, fold up the bottom end. So you've got the flat end facing you and the flap of the pouch facing away from you. And you've got the lining side facing up. And all you're going to do is you're going to bring up your bottom end of your pouch and you're just going to fold it so it's like the pretty side is facing. And I usually have it about three quarters of an inch down from that last curve. So, and I just eyeball it. So you can see there, it's about three quarters of an inch down from this last point here, down to here on both sides. Okay, and what I'm going to do now, if you're not going to put your little lobster hook in, you just did, uh, don't worry about this next step. But I put some Wonder Clips on. Bring them over a little bit closer. And that's just going to hold it all in place for me. And then I just get my little, get rid of my threads off there. <clears throat> and I just pop that. about half an inch down from the corner so I'll just get a uh, pin into that where oh, I... Elizabeth hasn't seen you yet because she came oh, in late she's yeah. asking did you cut your hair <laughs> yeah yes. I'll be back in a minute <laughs> <laughs> we're almost at the end of our little tutorial today so um so what I've done is I've just come down about half an inch from the corner here and I've just placed my little tab in. Now, I don't worry about catching it between the layers or anything because, as I said, this is just a little coin purse. Um, I've never had any issue with these coming out. And once you've sewn your quarter, uh, your, your um, top stitching in, you can't actually see it anyway. So there's no raw edge in there. If you're concerned about a raw edge, you can always pink the end of it and put some fray check on it. But this is just a quick and simple way of doing it. And um, yeah, so I just wonder clip that into place and then we're going to start to stitch this close and our purse is almost done. If you don't want the lobster clasp, just admit that don't worry about doing this step. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to start from one edge here down the bottom and we're going to top stitch all the way around. And I like to just do a little reverse when I get to the flat part here because this has a little bit of pressure on it. And we're going to go all the way around and we're going to stop down this end here, remembering to reverse at the beginning and at the end.
and we're just going to use an eighth of an inch and we're going to increase our stitch length up to a uh, three millimeter but test your test your machine because every machine's different my machine a three millimeter is a really nice um, top stitch I start with the needle in the down position because we are going through um, bulk so just take it nice and slow I'll grab my tailors all and give it a little bit of a helping hand sometimes And just leave your needle in the down position when you come to the areas where you've got to turn. Now as you're coming, uh, you can see here I'm coming towards the flap and this might move on you. So I always just take a stitch at a time and I lift the presser foot up with a needle in the down position. I know that that's not going to, to move and then I can lift it up and make sure that it's all sitting flat before I continue on. Give it a little bit of a reverse, just that added security there. over our little lobster clasp and tab and then down to the ends it actually feels weird with no nails <laughs> i'm used to having nails there <laughs> Alrighty, so that is the construction of the little coin purse as i said super simple super quick you can see there we've got a little coin purse now it's great for kids it's great for little little people as well like their little first wallet and then basically now all we've got to do is put our little cam snap in and then we're done so to do that i'm just going to move my sewing machine out of the way a bit so we can see what i'm doing oh, that is one heavy sewing machine elizabeth mckay um yep has a little tip yep she uses a thick nail file to start thick bits like this yep. under the presser you, under the presser foot. Yep. And it lifts the foot up. It it lifts the foot. Yeah. Um. You can actually get presser feet too that have a little black button. I think I've got one for this one, but I never remember to put it on. Uh, just let me have a look. Here it is. So you might have a, a presser foot in your um, arsenal that has this little black. Um, button on it and you can see that you can push it in if you're having trouble getting over thickness stuff, and, and you use this on jeans and stuff like that this actually um, you push and it just gives it a little bit of um, of a lift and helps you get over that bulk um, my machine is in dire need of service normally I don't have any issue with bulk um, but when I'm doing little purses like this you can just get the tailors all in there and just help it along but yeah the nail file would be a good tip too um, that's another one that we'll write down in our little arsenal of tips. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know, you might just see us using it one day. <laughs> you never know. You just never know. So, yeah. Alrighty. So, we, um, so yeah, have a look for your, um, and, and that's just my regular foot for my particular machine, which is the Singer Quantum L500. And that just helps you get over bulk. I use that when I'm sewing with denim and you're going over like double um, seams and stuff like that. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is just to um, put our little cam snap on the little purse. It's so cute. Okay, and now there's two different tools that you can use to um, <laughs> you can um, use to make a hole in your fabric. I uh, use this for really thick and bulky bags, um, and I can also use it here as well. Or you can use a tailor's all. So just want something that can poke a hole to put our little um, cam snap in. So I'm going to grab my snaps and grab a colour. I'm thinking a light pink today. So you can see I've got a few. I do a few of these. So you want a male and a female part of your cam snap as well. Okay. So the male part is raised. And I don't know if I'm going to get that on camera or not. 
So maybe this way. So it's got like a little lip on it. You can see there. And the female part is got the divot. Okay. And you need two caps. All right. So I've got those. Set them aside. And then I'll just grab my uh, little ruler. And then I measure about, so this measurement here is about two and a half inches, roughly two inches. Yeah, just on two, almost on two inches. So I just sort of find the center of it. An easy way to do that is just to fold it in half and pinch it. You can pop a pin there if you need to, without stabbing yourself like I just did. <laughs> Always the way. So I know that that's where the center of my um, flap is. And then I'll just pop the ruler there and I'm going to go up about half an inch. And then I'll just grab my pen and make a little dot there. All right. So now I can use my tailor's awl and just poke a hole or I can use my little hole punch. And this is just a leather belt punch take that pin out now and sometimes you've got to clear the way and then I'll just put the top part of my cam snap there and then I will put the male part on like so so it just sits on top because they always have a little bit of a tendency of jumping out, I like to sit them down before I lose them. Then this black pit here is where the, the rounded edge of your um, cap goes. And this come with my pack. So it can't, the um, listing I've got down there comes with all the snaps and um, some screwdrivers and different size um, caps and, um, and then you just squeeze it closed and it comes with the tool as well now you don't want to be too aggressive with it you just want to give it a gentle squeeze and the the prong that was in the center is now crushed down so you'll be able to use it and then what I do is I just close that flap over to the give it a bit of a press so it stays in spot and then I just lift it up and make a little mark with my pen and then I know that this one is where it's going to go that's make our hole again clear the way with the tailors all and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your little cap and you're going to go on the inside of the bag or pouch so you can see there it's on the lining on the inside and then we get the female part and pop that on and sometimes these will click on and hold into place so it makes it a little bit easier and that's why I don't tend to have that um, with the the male part of it it tends to move around a little bit but the female part tends to click on and then it makes it a little bit easier because you're doing it in the lining as well and then just give it a gentle squeeze and you can see there that that's now crushed down and our little pouch is done. So we've got a little hanger on there so you can hang it onto your keys or you can leave that bit out and just have it in the bottom of your handbag or like I have been using them for little notions and for those that are, um, have come in late you can see here that this same size little pouch so I've got I use this for um, my sashiko, so I have a crochet hook in there to weave the tails, I have a pair of scissors, I have some floss, more needles, a little test tube of needles, <laughs> and some a needle threader and some other needles so I use all different sorts for my sashiko depends what um, floss I'm using as well and then the top part of the the um, pouch I just use as like a little needle book so that just sits in with all my sashiko and I'm not actually getting um, the needles in my hand or the scissors stabbing me or anything like that they're not floating around 
Um, and you can see that all fits in there quite nicely. And like, it's like a little Mary Poppins bag, just it keeps coming out. And then you can just have that closed and then you just chuck that in with your hand sewing. So that's our little coin purse today. Um, Do we have any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, and you've lost it? <laughs> there was a couple of comments. Yeah. Um, so many uses, like yep. for cards, cards and yeah, yeah. I've used. I things. have one in my handbag that I use for my business cards. Um, my girls use them for their student ID. Um, they also use them. I make them slightly bigger, and they use them for their um, personal hygiene products. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah, and they just have them in the bottom mm. of the bag. It keeps them um, clean and. And you know, you know what school bags are like. They end up with a ton of stuff in their books and all sorts of stuff. So they use them for their personal hygiene stuff. Um, I use them for coins. I've had a lot of grey nomads. Um, I don't know if they call them grey nomads around the rest of the world, but grey nomads are people that have retired and they're in their um, caravans and um, they travel all around the country. So um, they've used them for their um, washing machine like at caravan parks and stuff like that and laundromats they've used all their coins for that sort of stuff as well so yeah there's so many different uses that you can use them for so um i encourage you to get in there and have a go you've seen how quick it was it takes about 15 minutes 20 minutes to make one and that's even with um yeah bus pass all sorts of stuff so you mm -hmm. could use them for all sorts of things well, that was one of the questions was, is it okay for loose coins? That yes. Was from Bonita. Yes. Um, and Tamara asked, could you use cork on the outside? Yes, you could. With fabric on the inside? Yes, you could. Yep. Um, you would have to probably, you would have to make sure that you used Freycheck with the fabric on the inside. Um, you would have to do it a little bit differently because you don't have um, the cork if you're turning the cork out, you can turn cork out. It, it can be a little bit different um, and hard to do. You'd have to just make maybe the pouch slightly bigger to accommodate for that. And Big Mac is, would use it to hide money from his partner. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. But super <laughs> simple to make. As I said, you know, like with what, 15 minutes? And I ta I'm taking it slow, so um, yeah, I could pretty much whip these up <laughs> in about 10 minutes i use, i've got a um bag where i have all the linings cut out um and i just when i've got any scrap fabric or half a fat quarter or something like that <laughs> um i just basically whip one of these up and i usually have them there and as anybody that knows that's joined us for the finish at friday i made a ton of them not too long ago yes you did. that was sitting in the ufo <laughs> so that is our little tutorial today i'm going to lift the camera back up now so if you do get motion sickness look away Everyone's and waiting to see you. Yeah, I know, i just seen that. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so I didn't colour my hair for those that are all waiting. Um, I did get it cut. I got a fair bit cut off. I got about four inches cut off. Um, my hairdresser is going to help me break the habit of dyeing my hair because, as I said, I've been dyeing that for a long time. Um, and, yeah, it's just time to, to give it a rest, I think. So, yeah, I do have a fair bit of grey there. You can see that it's quite a bit, but um, it's quite dark still on top. So we're just going to um, grow it out and see where we end up. So, yeah. And thank you very much for everybody that's um, commenting on my hair. <laughs> um, I usually don't have it down, so but I thought I'll leave it down so everybody can see it today because I did say that I was but going. it looks good. Yeah, it does. I like it when um, Georgia cuts it. Like I said to uh, Georgia yesterday, uh, you can never leave. And if you do, I'm going to stalk you until I find you. So <laughs> That's the conversation that Savannah and I had as well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, she's a great hairdresser and she's only young, but she is really passionate about her job and loves it. Alrighty, so is there any more questions about the little pouch? I made a black one for Tom for his coins and he loves it. Yeah, it's super easy to make. Like, I've been making these for a long time. Um, I can't even remember where I first seen it because it was, I think it was just a picture I seen and I just thought I'd give it a go. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so mm. the measurements and everything like that, they're all my sort of measurements. Um, it's a really good size for it. It's uh, the original cut of the fabric, as I said is um nine and a half by five and a half rectangle and then i cut it into a template and you can see there that i just write on the bottom 
um, of what I need to cut. So I cut one exterior, one lining, one fusible fleece, and the tab is two inches by two and a half inches. So, um, yeah, and then I just um, measure in. So if you come in late at the beginning of the video, I show you how to get these uh, side cuts as well, which is just coming in and like coming in one and a half and down one and a half. So, but that's all there for you. And um, yeah, that's about it for us today. So we've been on for how long now? Um, a fair while, about 40 minutes by the looks of it, 45 minutes. That's yeah. about the size of our tutorials. If you have any further questions or you need a heads up of where to find things, um, don't be shy, just ask in the comments down below after we're live. If you um, make any of the, the tutorials that we do, please do share them over in our Facebook group and you can head over there if you haven't joined yet and hit that request to join and Beck and I will or pretty much straight away uh, add you. It's only at night that we don't add people straight away, but we <laughs> add first thing in the morning. As soon as I wake up, that's sort of what I check to make sure that no one's been waiting too long. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now. Bye.